Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here on this July 4th, and a happy July 4th to you and your family. I hope you have a great day today, enjoying the celebration of our country's freedom, and also our independence. And we're going to talk about that later on in the show. But uh, be, first of all, always be careful of driving and all. There's a lot of folks on the road, a lot of activities going on. But you have a great day, and you're starting off right because we're starting off with America's only daily outdoor TV show. Hi today. 93. Now, I missed it Wednesday morning. I said hi today was going to be like 93. It got up like 98. It has been a hot week. and I, and, But today, it's going to cool off a little, cool down, and cool down to 93 degrees, and low night is going to be like 75. The uh, river, I don't have them on the screen, but I can tell you what they are. River is a big river. Apalachicola at Blunstown is 4.8, and it's, it's in great shape if you want to be in the river today. A lot of y'all are going to be in those sandbars all up and down the river. I wish I had a plane. I could just fly over and see everybody. Uh, having a good time with those sandbars. The Choctaw at Caraville is at 4.5, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, fish and game forecast in this section here in case I make sure I get it put in. It's brought to us by Mark Coward of Edgewater Beach Realty. And our times, we're looking at 5.52 a.m. to 7.52, a great time. Uh, you can go out there right now when the show ends. And this evening at 6.14 to 8.14, that's two excellent times. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. Look on July the 4th, and look right there in the middle section. There's just flat out. There's not a tide right there. We, we don't have any tide. We're in deep tides between 6 o'clock this morning and 6 o'clock afternoon. There's just no, no tidal flow. So those deep tides will be with us another day or two, and then we'll get next week. We'll get into some strong tides, okay? Now, our marine forecast will be coming out of north-northwest at 5 to 10. We're still getting a little bit of remnants of that system off on the Atlantic coast. So it should be a great day on the water. There'll be only a 10% chance of thunderstorms. The biggest thing today, of course, will be the crowds at the boat ramp and all that. And it's just a personal thing. I, I just do not go out on July the 4th on Memorial Day. I just I leave it to all the other folks to go out. I try to get all my stuff done before those days. So, uh, But I may go down to the boat ramp today and to just take a look at everybody and have, having a good time and all. But now I, I was trying to think of something you need to do for July 4th. And I, I really want to, and, uh, and last night, Wendy, my daughter, posted something on Facebook, and I just, I just love it. I'm, I'm just going to read what she said because it sort of uh, embodies what, what we all feel. And she's an eighth grade American history teacher, and, uh, and I, I'm proud of her. And I'm, I'm going to read this to you. We're going to take time to do it because this is July 4th. And so go ahead and uh, just sit back and take a couple of sips of coffee, and, and, and let's take a moment to reflect on this. Happy birthday to the greatest nation, happy birthday to the greatest country in the world. I know people think we have slipped in that ranking, but what has happened over the past decade doesn't take away the sacrifices and heroic acts men and women have made over the past 238 years. I have the honor of teaching U.S. history to 8th graders. I think every American should have to take 8th grade American history over again. You know, that, you stop and think about that. You know, I wish we could, all of us could take it over again because I think we'll have a better understanding of it now that we're grown. In eighth grade, we, we don't have all that understanding of it. It is the only grade in Florida and many, and many other states where you learn about the founding of our country. In, okay, because in, in high school, they take American history from the Civil War to present, but the early history is taken in eighth grade. Okay, you, you forget the struggles that the British colonists went through after the French and Indian War, the bravery of men and women who decided to stand up to a government that was encroaching on their freedoms, women who decided to make and wear homegrown clothes rather than the finest silk. See, we don't think about those things anymore. Garments from Europe, men who, who picked up arms against soldiers of their own country because the occupation of their towns violated their rights. These were brave men. Then we had uh, secure a hard-won independence in the War of 1812. Okay, did you know that at the outset of that war, Great Britain had the most powerful navy in the world, and the U.S. had fewer than 20 ships, and yet we went to war with them. That's all. Okay, that's, that's all. We overcame uh, nearly, okay, we overcame nearly insurmountable odds to defeat the British agents 
uh, if you if you want to be inspired, read quotes from James Madison, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, any of our founding fathers, to be reminded of the purpose of this nation. It was an experiment that has changed the world. We have been a beacon and a light to millions. Or read or read about the men who inspired uh, these great men. Okay, and she goes on talks about the inspiration that you know that inspired these men. Or, or the quotes by Abraham Lincoln, one of the greatest orators and and, and writers uh, during the darkest part of our history. One of the greatest and most inspirational books of the Bible. Uh, there are hundreds of quotes from our founding fathers inspired by the Word of God. Read, get inspired, then act. Whether it is in a voting booth, in your local government, or a community service, you can go to the county commission meetings or city commissioners, monthly meetings. There are so many opportunities to make a change. Apathy is killing this country. Get involved. Okay, and then she wraps it up like that. But that is so true. I'm so proud of her. And she put it on Facebook. And went out. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm told I'm gonna read it to uh, my viewers because I. I think that just sums it up. So uh, let's take this break, and we're gonna be back in some really great pictures. Ah, right, welcome back. Let's go ahead and get started on pictures been sent to me this week, and I'll get them in here. All kind of stuff, and we'll try to get most of them in. But let's get started right away. The first one. This is a redneck motor. This is okay. If you can't afford a motor, I'll just get that drilled out there, put it on a rod, and uh, just go with it right there. A redneck motor. I like that one. All right. Uh, I tell you all these freshwater fish. I, I got a lot of comments on our show the other day on our fishing trip down to Howard Creek, and uh, this is sent to us by Tim Perry. He called a mess. He and his party called a mess of uh, rim and shell cracker the other day. All right, Bill Laminax in this picture, and this is some folks. This is a local picture now, and they got caught up on the hill. If you, if you fish in Marsh area, you know what what they've been through. If, you, if you're not experienced, this can happen. And the uh, sad thing about it, Bill says several people just went, rode right by him and didn't help, but Bill stopped and helped him out and told him back in. You see a, a fellow motorist, a fellow, a fellow boater in trouble, always stop and help them. Uh, you never know. Okay, I just like this picture here. This is this is just taking a utility trailer and making a you know bicycle rack out of it, and also a place to put your uh, kayak and canoe on it. You can take a utility trailer. A lot of times people buy specialized trailers, but you can make one out of a out of a regular trailer. Okay, okay, a little buddy here. We're all talking about the kids doing stuff in the outdoors. Okay, this is Evan uh, Evan Zachary. He's been on before. Herman caught that. That is, that is a big fish right there. That is a huge one. All right, good job right there, fellas. All right, uh, Andrew Adams, one of my students, just graduated this year, caught us on a devil's horse. It looks like he's fishing a golf course right there on a devil's horse. All right, I love this picture here. This is sent to us by buddy Ken Paramore's little seven-year-old granddaughter, Kendall. He calls it her, her nickname's K-Bug, and she called us her first two uh, Mahi Mahi, and he sent this for the Pokio Club. We don't have to talk recently about the Pokio. We still have a Pokio group of people and all these kids the Panhandle Outdoor Kids and Join Outdoors has a great job, little K bug right there. Good job. Love to see kids out there. All right, this is two different, two months apart. Same fisherman fishing the same dock. And uh, this is uh, really, you know, what's, this is Mark Grant. And what's good about it is bass fishing and uh, he, he, a wacky worm. The first one, one's eight pounds, one's nine pounds. And he caught and released those right there. All right. Uh, this is Ashlyn Jernigan, one of our former Outdoor Air Club presidents. Her boyfriend took a picture of her kissing that fish. So that's a good job, Ashlyn. Now this next one, I'm going to talk a minute about this. I did not believe this at first. All right, notice the boat. Okay, read this. This is at the St. Joe boat ramp. Okay, I, I thought it was a joke when they first sent it to me. Launch fee for county residents, $5. This is at a public boat ramp in downtown Port St. Joe. If you're county resident, it's going to cost you $5. If you're from out of county, it's going to cost you $10. All right, if you're a city, if you live in a city, they're going to let you get in free. Okay, then the procedure tells us how to do it, and it goes on to say uh, down at the bottom line, uh, fees collected are for improvements to the boat ramp facility, which I, I'm going to have to talk about this, folks. This, this uh, 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 okay, this ain't right. This is a public boat ramp. It's been a public boat ramp since the beginning, okay, when it first started a public boat ramp. And all of a sudden, right here beginning of the scallop season, they're starting to charge $10. I, I, when I saw, in fact, I rode by the boat ramp last night because I still couldn't believe it. People have emailed me, and, and that doesn't upset people about it. So I rode to the boat ramp, and sure enough, they got a big old sign up, strictly enforcing and all that. 
it, you know, it, it goes, it's almost odd that I bring it up on, on July 4th and, and the thing that Wendy just wrote. This is like a uh, taxation without, without representation and, 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 and apathy, like Wendy said, apathy is killing this country. We've sat around, sat around, let these politicians do stuff like this all across America. You know, we complain about all the politicians in Washington. There's some rotten ones up there, and I don't care what party, Democrat and Republican. There's some bad ones up there. It's, it's trickled down. Scott Lindsay came up with this last night. I talked to him about it. Bad politicians are not just confined to Washington, D.C. or down to Tallahassee, Florida. All across our country, the, the politicians are, have, have run our country just about it. And, and doing things like this is terrible. That, uh, if, if I would go to church with people like that, I would tell them on Sunday morning, I would tell them, I wouldn't say anything in the church, but I would have got out on the porch. I'd say, that's flat out ain't right what you're doing. Okay, it's like they're, they're just taking advantage of us. We're sportsmen, we're outdoorsmen, we're hardworking Americans. Everybody deserves a chance to have a free boat ramp. It's always been free. I mean, if it had been charged, if it charges ten dollars for you know fifty years, it's different. But all of a sudden, come in and say, and I know uh, cities are hurting for money, but <clears throat> you don't tax people, the good, hardworking Americans like this, and come up with something like that. I, I was driving home. I was driving after I left that boat ramp. And my blood was boiled, and I said, this, this is what's wrong with our country. Politicians have done stuff like this all across America. And again, I will repeat, it's almost, it's almost running our country doing stuff like that. I, I, I don't want to get on a ramp. I'm not running for office or anything, but that flat out ain't right to do that. And there's some upset people. And, and we somewhere along the line, we as Americans got to draw that line and say, by golly, we're not going to take it anymore. And, and if the outdoorsmen can't do it, who is going to do it? And we're outdoorsmen. And, and you got these families coming down from Defuniac and Bluntstown and all oh, Mariana, all throughout the Panhandle, want to go scalloping. And, you know, $10, I know that's not a huge lot, but what if you're camping out trying to go like two days, three days? That's $20 or $30 you got to pay. What about these guys that make a living off fishing, got to, you know, go in there fishing 20 times a week? That's $200 a month. I mean, that, that ain't right. It, it, you know, I can go on and on about it. So I didn't mean to get on a, on a ramp, uh, rampage about it, but uh, uh, I hope something's done about that because, it, you know, uh, and for improvements of the boat ramp, that's baloney. If you think I believe that, then I got some swamp land to sell you because improvements of boat ramp, that's state money come down from our tax, from our uh, uh, hunt, our fishing license sales, all that. That money is spread out throughout the state for boat ramp improvements. It's not, you don't stick to people. Plus, I've also heard through the grapevine that Mexico Beach is watching what happens on this, and if St. Joe gets away with it, they're going to do the same thing on a new ramp in Mexico Beach. Now, they do it in Mexico Beach. Can you imagine them doing a car gray park? Okay, enough said about that. I, it, one more thing, it ain't right, okay? Let's go to some more pictures, Jeff, before I get in trouble here. This is Coach Jeremy Brown, my buddy, the head football coach, at, new head football coach at Mosley High School. Jeremy loves to go wade fishing. And he's wade fishing up there in North Bay, and uh, Jeremy's a good guy right there. Good job, Jeremy, okay? And here's a young man you may recognize I had on before, Corey Haston, okay? His granddaddy will be proud of him. Good job, Corey. And uh, finally getting a good grouper picture. Grouper season is now open. All right. Had him on before. Brandon Davis, he and his friend uh, Kai, they're fishing on the bridge. They had a couple of big redfish they caught and let go. Took a picture of them and let them go. But uh, redfish, I'm going to talk about it in the fishing report. Red fishing on the bridge is really doing good. And I, I like this picture here. All right, this is uh, on the Choctahatchee, on the Choctahatchee River. Carolyn Poole, she loves retirement. And uh, she's retired now, and you see what she can do. Good job, Carolyn Poole. And uh, my buddy over here, Bobby Jones, fishing Indian Pass. You watch your show a lot. He's back behind. If you look and see where it's at, uh, back behind sort of St. Vincent Island, which I've, I talk about this a lot of time. That's you got to be careful about there. Now you need a small boat, a lot of oyster bars and all. But that's an excellent place to uh, to go fishing there. Okay, so that takes care of our pictures, and uh, I have all kind of other things to talk about now. One of the things. Uh, we, we were going to uh, talk about, let's see, the daggum pole. The daggum poles are in, are go, are in the stores, and I, some of our sponsors, Sunjammers now have them, uh, July, uh, as of July 1, so Sunjammers has them, uh, Blue Water Outriggers in St. Joe has them, and C&G Sporting Goods, those three of our sponsors I know have them, and I believe over there on your neck of the woods, Copeland's, uh, over there on our west end over there, Copeland might have them over there close to Freeport, okay? Uh, also wanted to mention the book full boxes. People have trouble finding a blue water. I went down there and they and they did have it sort of in, a, in an unusual place, but now we have them or they have them. 
right you walk in that main aisle to the right where all the, the tackle is and they got a big case there that has the has the rock, has all the reels and everything then uh that that's the place right there to have them it's called uh it's right there on the counter with the reels they don't have they don't have two left between now and i'll get them some more next week okay and then uh scallop and i'm gonna give you the scallop report uh I, uh, one thing, make sure you wear suntan lotion. That first couple of days scalloping, I mean, there are a lot of people got sunburned. It, the scallop report, it, it, it's not, it hadn't been really good, okay? My, our first day we went out, uh, actually we didn't go to about July the uh, 2nd or 3rd. Okay, well, I say went Monday of this week, and uh, didn't find a whole lot. I went to some place I went last year, didn't find a whole lot. And keep in mind, I've got three to, three to four kids with me, and, and uh, we sort of take going to areas, sort of what I call child areas, and, and but it's safe for them and it's not deep water and all so we, but we found that before we didn't find any uh and we did yesterday we, we got enough yesterday we're gonna have, on a fit on a fish fry today we're gonna have enough to cook and all we found some uh, yesterday but again they're not very big and you really got it i i was counting i'd pick i'd pick up out of five i picked up i probably threw three or four back and kept one or two so that's how, how you got to do it to get enough so it takes a little while to do that and then you got to go through when the kids pick up all theirs they, they of course they they said they look big on the water, and we'll get them on the boat. And of course, when they turn them back, I to toss them back in the water to some of the small ones. So I don't want to discourage them, but that's sort of how it looks right now. I talked to FWC, some some of the guys that are working with FWC, and asked them about the boats they're checking. And uh, the guy told me, uh, Officer Castellina said, there's only been one boat I've checked that has had the limit. Okay, I went by Press Nails, saw some boaters coming out of Press Nails, and uh, one boat had found 14 scallops. Another boat just shook their head, said they didn't find very many. So uh, it's not really, I, we don't have the numbers yet, but I, I've been out there, I can tell you, it's not really, the, the scallop r reports uh, that I'm getting and that I have experienced have not really been good this first week of scalloping. And I, it just reinforces what I said about I wish that, you know, they would wait and, uh, and, and open up a little bit later. I see all those little scallops out there. I know a bunch of people, especially tourists, uh, don't know any better and they, they think that's a good scallop and you open up those little scallops and you talking about a peanut and they really are a peanut we had a couple of them that, that some of them that actually in our we couldn't get rid of all the little ones but when i did open up a couple of little ones and they're already at the house when i did that uh, they, they were like the size of a peanut so uh it's not it's not an outstanding report yet i think it'll i think it'll pick up in a couple of weeks and uh and we'll go from there so uh let's go ahead and uh, i've got a lot more stuff to talk about too but uh Let's go into a Tarpon Rock Seafood giveaway real quick, okay? I'm going to get it in right now. We okay on our time? Okay, let's take a break. We'll come right back. Okay, folks, I apologize. First time ever in the history of Panhandle Outdoors, I just flat out forgot a break. I got so carried away talking about that, uh, that situation down at St. Joe Boat Ramp. But by the way, did I tell you all I don't think that's right? But anyway, I'm, I'm going to do a quick draw, and we'll take a break, and we'll come back to our famous Friday fishing report, okay? These are the winners today on July 4th. All right, July 4th winner for the $20 gift certificate is going to be Margaret Taylor from Panama City Beach. Margaret, $20, and a big red snapper is going to be... I'm going to get one that's all folded up right here. And that winner is Greg Allred. Greg Allred wins the red snapper. And Margaret wins it. Uh, okay, let's take out. We've got to get caught up. We've got to take another break. And we'll come back with a famous Friday fishing report. All right, welcome back, folks, to the famous Friday fishing forecast brought to you by Tarpon Dock Seafood. We don't have a lot of time, but basically, I want to say in San Andrew Bay, while it's been hot, you saw that big speck of trout caught this week. You're catching in deep in deeper water now. Those potholes are about six to eight foot is where the big trout are coming. Also, bridge fishing underneath the bridge, bridge for redfish. Okay, redfish, uh, and it's great fishing at night. I'm talking about fishing at night now. Even top water, the kayak have been doing it for quite some time. The old timer did it till they got tired of it, but now it's, it's sort of gotten popular again. And uh, you can go catch some uh, redfish under the bridge on these cool summer nights. It's a lot better fishing in the middle of the day. Also, offshore, right right outside the pass. King mackerel, king mackerel, king mackerel. A lot of folks are catching king mackerel. Uh, and Mexico Beach, uh, Mitch sent his report last night. Water temperatures 84 degrees down to Mexico Beach, and that's the first thing he said, kings, kings, kings. They're hitting everywhere around structure. You can troll for them. You can sort of anchor off like we do sometimes, anchor off around the structure and just cast out there and just free line it and catch some nice kings. All right, let's go to St. Joe Bay. Everybody wants to know about the location of the scallops. And, uh, there, I've talked again. Now I've talked a lot of folks, and I've been myself. And right now, it's been it's been a it's been weak. Uh, we started. We looked around uh, one of my old honey holes. I'm gonna go and point out. This is Black's Island here. Okay, 
it's the black side and right in here, okay? And I start, a lot of times I start the season off, I just work around Conks Island and go north in here. And I, what we did, we zigzagged back and forth, but I didn't get in deep water now. I stay in shallow water with the kids, and I'm gonna, we're gonna take an adult trip <laughs> pretty soon, but uh, it, it was slow up in here, okay? Now, uh, it, it, I'll be honest with you, they're scattered and they're really small up in this area here. Uh, now, you can do these channels here, but uh, be careful. And, uh, okay, I'm going to go up a little bit. A lot of folks, I'll tell you where a lot of people are putting in. They're getting a lot of pressure, and it used to not be that much pressure. But right here, this is what is called a stump hole. That's a cape and lighthouse. This is a stump hole right here. People putting kayaks in. I counted, I counted uh, 13 different trucks with kayaks and cars and everything. People just paddling up in here. I do, do not, I haven't been in this area yet. I do not know what they're doing. I do know that people put in over the road. I counted right here where people park beside Highway 30A. And by the way, be careful driving through there. I counted uh, the opening day, 33 vehicles, 33 vehicles on both sides of the road. And uh, people are waiting out going in here. And the ones I saw coming back did not have very many scallops. So uh, uh, then up in here on Pigs Island, I hadn't got much going on there. So I, I don't know, to be honest with you, I don't know where I'm going to go scalloping next. I know I'm not, I've gone a couple of times just getting up for this July 4th cookout today. And a couple of weeks, probably in August, when August starts, I'm just going to start back over and maybe see if they move around a little bit and go a little bit deeper water. So, but that's that's his scholar report. Now, the triple tail fishing has been excellent. Back behind uh, St. Vincent Island, uh, I don't talk a lot about triple tail fishing, but they've really done well. Down on St. George Island, uh, they're doing good on the backside. Okay, here here's St. Vincent Island here, and uh, always it's really good fishing here. But remember, a lot of oyster bars kicking out in here, and it's just really. Uh, uh, we've got to be really careful to fish here. That's why I don't talk a lot. Apalachicola Bay, uh, overall, is good. And uh, the whole, the whole, this is July fishing. You know, it's going to be hot. You've got to fish early in the morning and late in the afternoon. Uh, and in the middle of the day, it's, it's too hot to fish. Or you can fish at night, like a lot of these folks are doing, and a lot of fun, too. Okay? I'm going to start wrapping things up again. I wish you a very happy July 4th. And uh, thank God for our freedom here in America. And make sure sometime today, you know, you're going to have a great opportunity to be around people at boat ramps and all that. Do something good for your fellow American. You have a great weekend, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.